Okay guys, today we're going to transfer our sketch onto our silk hoop. We're going to use watercolor pencils, so I have some in this box here, or in this Derwent box here. We're going to use watercolor pencils instead of regular color pencils because regular color pencils are waxy. And if you um, maybe miss covering your lines with your Gouda, I don't want to take any chance that that wax is going to resist the watercolor dye and show up in your final picture. So the watercolor pencils are not waxy and if they don't wash out, at least they won't resist the watercolor. So you have a completed sketch over here and a silk hoop. The silk hoops have a, are just glued onto a metal ring and the side where you can see the metal ring is the back. This, I mean you can see it because it's transparent, but the silk is flat here and just kind of rolls over that edge. That is the top. So I'm going to put the top of my silk on my sketch so that when I look at the front, my sketch isn't reversed to a mirror image, like a print. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna choose a colored pencil that will be unobtrusive in my final piece. So my picture is gonna have a lot of green, so I'm just gonna choose a green watercolor pencil. Then, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well on camera, but when I push the silk against the surface of the sketch, it, I can see my sketch clearly. The silk is very thin and very transparent. So I'm just gonna push down on the silk so that it makes contact with the paper and trace my design so that my lines are on the silk. Okay, so my sketch has been transferred to my silk. Um, you can see on the sketch paper that I did have to outline my sketch again before I was able to see it well enough to trace it. Um, through the years I have trained myself to sketch really lightly, which is good if you make a lot of mistakes like I do, but not necessarily if you want to be able to see it through some other material. Um, but So I had to trace it twice, but there it is. Okay, so this is the applicator for the Gouda. Um, I have several of these on my desk. Um, when you're taking off the cap, you want to take off this white cap. This blue part wants to come off, but that's kind of what holds the needle in place. So we want to try to keep that on there. So I just unscrew this, and it's got a little needle inside here. When you put the cap on, you'll need to reinsert that because it keeps this little applicator tip clear so that um, it doesn't get clogged up with dried Gouda. All right, so I'm gonna take my silk and it is best if you do not lay this flat because when you lay it flat, if you're pushing, it's gonna make contact with the table and this Gouda is gonna sink all the way through the silk. It's gonna saturate it. So we don't want that to get on the table and smear around on the back. I'm a mess. So, uh, let's take a book or something, whatever you have at your table that you can use to sort of prop up your silk a little bit so it's not right on the surface of the table. The Gouda, I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit to make sure there's no air bubbles coming out onto my paper. Now, here's what's tricky about the Gouda. It is not water soluble. So if you smear it or drip or whatever on your silk, it's not coming off. So I'm gonna sort of start at the top and work my way towards me so that I'm not, you know, starting down here and then smearing my hand all over everything. So. If your hands are at all shaky, this will show you exactly how 
shaky they are. And my hands are pretty shaky. So you can see this makes a, it's not a super wide line, but it's not the finest line either. So this is why we don't want to outline little teeny shapes and texture shapes. We want to save those for to do with techniques. I'm sort of pressing the applicator into the silk. Not enough to poke a hole in it. I could if I pressed hard enough, but just enough to help steady my hand a little bit. So one thing I'm trying to do is make sure all of my shapes are closed. Because if my shapes have an opening, it's like a little dam or a little levee. The dye is gonna come through wherever it can. So a line like this, it really doesn't do anything. Like it's just decorative. But uh, a line that fully contains a color so that it's separate from the other colors around it, that needs to be a nice, solid, unbroken line. So sometimes people trying to make fine lines leave a lot of little breaks and we want to avoid that. The very first color that you put on your silk is going to show you exactly where you have breaks in your lines because it's going to travel through them immediately. So it's going to look sort of like a stained glass window when it's done because of the bold outlines and the very intense colors that we'll get. Okay, so one way to check your work to make sure your lines are closed. Your sketch is kind of helping fill in some gaps. So flip it over and look at the back and see if there's anywhere that you have a line that doesn't connect up to another line um, where dye could seep through without as much of your sketch visible to distract you from those gaps. So that's putting on the Gouda. When you're done, again, I would just wipe off the tip of the applicator. And then, oops, it's a little blurry. Put that little pin that's attached to the cap, good grief, into the opening of the applicator to keep it clear. And tighten up the cap so it doesn't dry out. That's it. That's the Gouda step. Okay, so you can see I am done with the Gouda step. It might not look like I'm done with the Gouda step because there are some things in my picture that I did not outline with Gouda. And I did that on purpose because in my source image, those are background things that are really blurry. So I don't want them to have a hard outline. So when we um, do the watercolor, or not watercolor, silk techniques, I'll be showing you how to um, do some different painting techniques that might let you make things that have like a soft outline instead of a hard outline, just in case you have stuff like that in your picture. Also, I want you to notice that although my image has some black shapes in it, the insides of the poppies are black, 
um, I have not filled those in with Gouda. The Gouda is sort of rubbery and it's not a pleasing surface to, um, to touch or look at compared to the silk with silk dye. So those black shapes that you might have in your composition, just outline them and plan to paint them with black dye. We don't need to use black Gouda because we have black silk dye.